can keep this pretty brief, but um, you know, obviously to follow up on, on what we discussed, was that Sunday now, right? So a couple days, but you know, we, we knew there was still some potential to um, trade a few more players. Uh, we went to, in today thinking that there was going to be an opportunity to do something with, with Paul D, and we were able to accomplish that. And then um, really we were just sort of like sitting back and seeing the level of interest we would end up having with Jack because it, we really felt like after um, we moved Monty, it did sort of clear the deck and it allowed for other teams to then start to focus on that. So when you think about what we were able to accomplish over you know, really last week and a half, we acquired 10 players, seven of which are pitchers, um, five starters, two relievers, one at the major league level, three will be assigned to triple A, one at double A, and one at, at um, low A, and then one will be rehabbing. Uh, three position players, one going to triple A, one to double A, and one to our complex league. So pretty diverse group, but um, you know when you, when you see that many players going to triple A, feel like we gave ourselves a chance to really add uh, uh, to our bench, if you will, and to give us a lot of options moving forward and, and something that we don't have to wait four or five years to see a return on. So net net, we're excited about it, but we still have to be patient, get them into our system and see really where we're at. But that's my summary. Well, the nine players that you required to go to the minor leagues, how many of those do you imagine would impact your major league team? Um, I, I think it's a little early to say. I mean, we, we do envision those guys that are going to AAA to be that phone call away. We do envision the person going to AA to be a phone call away. I think, you know, when you're, when you're below that, you've got to earn your way up. But um, it's not uncommon for someone to go to AA to go to the big leagues. Can you look at Brom in particular? Is that a player who you think maybe is on the verge of being able to make, make a big start? Yeah. Um, we're certainly excited about getting him. Um, you know, when you look at the breadth of pitching we got. We, we did look at, at guys that were maybe more of a traditional St. Louis Cardinal model, were high ground ball rate, but we also tried to, to tilt more to some swing and miss and to higher strikeout rate. And a lot of the, of the minor league pitchers, several of them that you got are going up a level from where they came. What does that say about where your system was? Well, we also thought of the time of year. My, my guess is some of these guys were about to get promoted anyway. Um, actually, what it says about our system is it's a little crowded at Memphis, but we wanted to be aggressive with that, and uh, we felt basically how they were performing, they deserved that opportunity to go higher. Well, because all the guys, most of the guys you traded were going to be for that impact on what you could get back. Well, um, I think you hear that phrase, I'm not paying for a rental, so um, I think you guys can determine how that's viewed, but when you look at the players that were moved and relative to what other teams received, you know, we felt we did well, but I imagine every team feels they did well. Um, but obviously when you're having a player for, for two months, it's a lot different than acquiring somebody for five years. Well, you've repeatedly stated that you ideally would like to contend in 2024. A lot of these moves, well, there's some optimism that some of these players could impact the 2024 roster, don't necessarily have that absolute promise. Today, but how does bolstering your bench, especially at the levels, allow you to, to continue building a competitive roster next year? That, that's a very fair question, and I would say two things. One is the, the depth now that you've added to our minor league system that you didn't have, say, four days ago, has changed dramatically. Um, in terms of impact, when you're looking at, 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 at trying to fill three rotational spots, obviously we know that that's either going to have to come through the trade market this offseason or the free agent market, and we'll prepare ourselves for the following. But we didn't feel like there was, those types of deals existed to, like in this process. Um, and so we, we looked at really what path we could go down, and, and we decided to go down the path of, of just adding as much depth or, or breadth, if you will, to our system. And I feel like we accomplished that. Now, next year's roster is going to look different. We know that. Um, weren't at the competitive level we want it to be, so change has to happen. Well, you've got quite a crowd in the outfield. Is there interest in outfielders that you have on your roster currently? Yeah, I don't want to get into specifics. I mean, I, I would say like you know, virtually half our roster people asked about, but as you can imagine, when, when players aren't, aren't performing at the level that we expect them to, it's, it's probably not the ideal time to be, I hate to use the word selling, but um, 
looking to trade. Uh, so, you know, we really felt like guys are going to get a lot of opportunity now for the next two months. Let's see what we have, and then we can use this off season to rethink that, reorder it, reprioritize. When you, think about, when you think about the depth you added from middle infield, the guys you added down to the upper level, and then the outfield circumstances you just described, it, is that where you could pull from to get one of the starters you need? Is that kind it's of possible? Here? Yes. I mean, obviously, we didn't feel like we, we could do that in this period. Um, was it talked about? Yes, but it just no one. Where where there was that sort of their strength or their depth. They just weren't in a position to pull pull it now, and I think a lot of things you got to always remember this time of year. Teams that are trading for to win now don't want to trade from their current roster, and so it just really limits your ability to make that more impactful deal. And well, reading from uh, about Rom, uh, fastball looks like right around like 91, but amazing slider. What can you share about things that enticed you to try to get him? I think the most important thing is his ability to go pole to pole, like durability. Um, but we were also, you know, frankly, just very excited about his ability to strike people out um, and just have success. And, and so that just fits in what we were looking to do. I mean, obviously, you're not going to find a, a, a top 10 prospect when you're trading for these types of things unless there's massive amounts of money involved or something. And that wasn't the case in these deals. The exception of Hennessy Cabrera was traded for a different reason. All five of the players who traded were set to be free agents. How much did you stress keeping players under team control because you believe in the core of this roster for next year? Well, I think it's, a, it's twofold. One is we, we do like our everyday club. Um, we certainly did not want to give up players that we do have under control uh, from our middle relief or, or from our rotation. Like I said earlier, a lot of players were asked about, but we just didn't feel like that was in our best interest. We already know we're going to have Yeoman's work to do to fill our rotation. And and so we didn't want to make that even more difficult. The other day when we were in here, you said it's a possibility that Mason Wing could get called up now that trade deadline's open. Over, what can you share? Is it possible he'll be called up? Sure. But you're not making an announcement that it's happening anytime soon. Or what else do you say about that? Do you think anytime soon? Um, I don't know. Okay. I mean, we just got Tommy Edmond back. We're going to plug and play him at short and uh, see where we look. But like I said the other day, I, I could envision at some point this year we see him. Well, do you guys know yet what kind of procedure uh, uh, Donovan will have on his arm? Yeah, he's having a, a ligament repair, but it's not Tommy John. Brace. Modified. Confident yeah. he'll be a full go by spring training? That's or? what we've been told. Okay. That's what we anticipate. Do you know more about Roby at this time if you did not after like what his throwing program what his I, play is? I have not had any time to focus on that, so no. Well, you, did you guys consider um, holding Jack and going the qualifying offer route? And what about the return for Baltimore? Made you guys decide to take that route instead? Well, as you can imagine, um, what a qualifying offer could get you in return, I would hope you think we better based on the three players we got. Okay. So, um, I just, because you've talked about how much work there is to be on the rotation, I didn't know if it was appealing the idea of maybe getting clarity on But it's basically three acts of that pick. So, no. so the corollary to that they, is keeping them up. It's, it's, no, I understand it's keeping, keeping Jack. Jack, right? No, I understand the reference, but when you're able to acquire that type of talent, it's hard not to do. Well, you, talk, you mentioned sort of the opportunity people get over the next couple of months. How different is, is the next couple of months going to be for you guys as far as just being in that mode? And also, how important is that some of the evaluations that they made that are going to be for your office? Well, I think the difference for, for us over the past two decades to now is like, you know, obviously October is, a, is not likely going to happen, but. We still want to come to the ballpark every day. We still want to put an entertaining product out there. We still hope to win baseball games. From a front office standpoint, yeah, it's going to weigh in heavily on how people perform and what we see, and that will determine you know, how we really put our off-season strategy together. Well, I'll even now that we're going to get one of those opportunities that Pat Giorgio is going to have some of the other players that you think fall into that category. Okay? I mean, right now, Dakota Hudson um, will obviously get some starts or, and, and see how that goes. Uh, could be some of these younger guys that we traded for that, that may end up getting some opportunity. So 
as you can imagine, I mean, this is like kind of a whirlwind few hours. I mean, like, I need like time to like think about roster, think about where it's going to be, what it's going to look like, and and then position it to to allow for that optimization of opportunity for some of these pretty good players. Would you expect to go back to free catch at some point before the end of the year? Possibly. So, I mean, that was an option today, but you know, with the uh, Gill wanted a little more protection there. I mean, I think like getting somebody like Luke and Baker up here at some point to give him some more bats would be interesting. So there's a lot of things we want to do, but to ultimately you still want to win baseball games. Well, based on what you have right now, the scouting reports, analytic reports on these guys, of the players you acquire, who is closest to the majors in your estimation, other than King? Um, He's obviously in the majors. You know, I, I, I think like Hoffenstein is someone that's going to be interesting. I think Robert is going to be someone that's going to be interesting. So I, you know, these guys are close, and uh, uh, looking forward to seeing what they can do. Well, your experience, experience of being a seller for the first time in your career, obviously, it's not something that you enjoy or anticipated. But was there anything that you learned about this process that surprised you? I mean, it's definitely a little different when when people are coming to you for things versus you're going to them, and. Um, you know, it, it is insightful on like some teams don't want to talk about certain things. Other teams are just keep throwing things at you. And um, you know, for us, we were usually sort of that ladder, just always trying to get deals done to acquire talent. But it's it's really just the polar opposite. But it's not really that different. It's you know, it, unless you're just standing back, and it's probably a very quiet deadline. But um, this, from a standpoint of just volume, was obviously the biggest I've ever been a part of. The, the task of going into an offseason is still needing three starters. How daunting is that? Can you describe that, the, the monu monumental you know, magnitude of trying to find three starters? I think your question answers it, but I, I, yeah, it's going to be work. Was anything close? Or was it really just about getting Jack done? Um, after Paul got done, was was there anything else out there that? I mean, look, we were open for business. Again, if people had interest in something, they could have called, but no, there was nothing really else. Well, is that sure, the, is anything that, about your conversation with Jack? Uh, you know, he thanked me for his time here. I thanked him for, for what he meant to the Cardinals. I wished him well. Um, you know, I I said like, you know, you never say never. Could be back. Mo, well, was there? Point to maybe in your last description about how people are coming to you, this answers that. But did you explore anything where you would be considered a buyer? Yeah, we did. Um, especially if it had some level of control, okay. but um, never got to the point where we could get that done. Uh, uh, no, just going to go back to the bottom of the there sort of a trickle down effect with Jason Wynn and kind of how we did that. If there's a call and just kind of timeline on that with him out for the rest of the year. Yeah, again, I don't know when we're going to bring him up. I think he's playing really well, but um, you know, I, I could imagine at some point he's back. Is one it's an opportunity, not back. Is one consideration in that rookie eligibility? It's forty-five days on the roster. I just have to wait for him. I haven't even thought about that, but thanks for pointing it out. Mo, how much can some of the conversations you've had over the last couple of weeks inform off-season discussions that you may have with other teams? Um, I think it was helpful. Yeah, I mean, obviously, because you're talking about so many things like, like that maybe didn't get done, but it gives you an idea of what maybe potentially could happen in the future. Now, you know, both parties, things can change, but I, I did think that was uh, helpful. You mentioned that other teams that are competing right now, contending right now, don't want to trade from their major league club. Is that something you ran into on the starting pitching market specifically? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was your conversation with Bolden when you reported this big trade? I, I think he was a bit surprised, um, but I would say he was professional, pro, um, gracious for his time here, was uh, very appreciative of the opportunity he got this year. Um, I think a lot of people thought maybe that wasn't a good idea, but then for him to, you know, really, you know, basically put up league average numbers at short, he got, he got himself back on the map. Did Toronto contact you or did you contact um, Ross had reached out to me, and so uh, we talked about it. Real quick, uh, Jordan Walker getting to play at lunch. The season already now in the final 50, however many games. What are you hoping to see out of him? What are you hoping to develop? 
uh, as he gets even more Well, what you're hoping for is that he can continue to grow and develop, right? Um, obviously, you're excited about the talent. You, you know what's there. But you, you have to see that evolve to this level and consistency. And, and so it's learning at the big leagues is tough. It's very demanding. And, um, you know, hopefully he, we can find a pathway for that. Yeah, it'd be great. All right, here's the national anthem. Thanks, Mo. Okay, thank you.